Uh, uh, in, on the ongoing saga of uh, uh, trying to understand uh, data management in terms of uh, database management systems, uh, we have looked at several different uh, topics in uh, database management. Uh, however, there is a uh, there is some kind of a common theme or uh, an implicit theme uh, in uh, database management uh, in whatever uh, topic that we are looking at, namely that uh, database or databases are uh, primarily or essentially represented using the relational data model. Right? So, what is the relational data model? That is, uh, the, the data pertaining to the UOD or the, or the universe of discourse is uh, maintained as a set of tuples or uh, as a set of uh, rows in a table. Right? And uh, the, the, the main assumption here is that every possible kind of uh, data can be reduced to a set of tuples. In uh, this lecture uh, and in the following lecture, uh, we will kind of generalize uh, on this assumption or we'll, uh, uh, we will not accept this assumption and look at uh, other kinds of um, uh, database uh, management um, uh, requirements where uh, data cannot be uh, in a sense uh, uh, easily mapped onto the relational model. And uh, so, uh, in, in this uh, context specifically, we shall be looking at the object oriented database that is shown in the slide here. So, let us look at uh, uh, what kind of uh, 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 data that, that we are talking about when we are looking into object oriented databases. Uh, 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 but before we begin, uh, in fact, uh, object oriented databases have been uh, very popular in the, uh, in the last decade of the uh, 20th century in the sense that uh, in, the, in the 1990s. Uh, and, uh, but however, uh, uh, they were not as widely successful as say the, the relational database namely uh, mainly because uh, uh, the object oriented uh, databases do not have a sound theory that is they, they, they do not have uh, a nice uh, little uh, mathematical model that describes the complete data model uh, as opposed to the relational data model where you have the relational algebra or the tuple relational calculus and so on where the entire data model is, uh, uh, is, is amenable to a nice theoretical framework. So, uh, it is because of one of these reasons wh which is probably cited as, uh, as the reason why uh, object oriented uh, databases uh, uh, did not sustain uh, a lot of interest. But however, uh, the contrary is also true to some extent that is uh, object oriented databases have been in use uh, or have been put to use in, in several different applications mainly uh, CAD applications computer aided design of uh, say electrical circuits or uh, uh, mechanical circuit uh, mechanical um, uh, 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 design and so on. Uh, and uh, they continue to be used and uh, there are quite a few uh, commercial implementations of uh, uh, object oriented databases. So, uh, uh, in, in this lecture and the next when we are talking about object oriented databases, we uh, kind of implicitly assume an example application of a CAD uh, uh, that is computer aided design uh, scenario, where, uh, uh, where, where users would be using uh, 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 computers to uh, perform electronic design or electrical design and uh, where uh, uh, an electronic design comprises of several different components. Uh, I, I might have an IC, I might have a capacitor, a resistor, a transistor and so on. Each component having its own characteristics and having its own behavior and so on. Okay? But uh, 
uh, that's uh, uh, that's the implicit assumption that we are going to make. But that doesn't really necessarily mean that uh, object-oriented databases are suitable only for CAD applications. Uh, of course, there could be several other uh, applications as well. So let us uh, come back and look into what kind of complex data objects that we are talking about uh, when we say that uh, we are going to generalize or we are going to uh, move away from the relational model and look into other kinds of models. Uh, have a look at the first example here, say some multimedia databases. What, what do you understand by the term multimedia databases? Databases that store multimedia objects. What do we mean by multimedia objects? Uh, you might have, uh, in, uh, you would have encountered several kinds of multimedia objects uh, if you have, uh, let us say, worked with any uh, uh, GUI based uh, uh, operating system like say Windows and uh, 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 Windows XP and so on, where uh, you, you encounter objects like menus, scroll bars, drawing areas, uh, then, then something like uh, 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 when you click something that there is a sound that appears and there is a uh, uh, for, for specific kinds of events, specific kinds of uh, uh, sound and light uh, so to say uh, 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 messages are, are uh, thrown to the user and so on and there is flash animation and so on. And uh, look at the second kind of uh, application that we have talked about that is namely the CAD where uh, what would a what would a what would a typical uh, uh, CAD application for uh, electronic design comprise of? Uh, uh, a, a typical CAD application in a typical CAD application, the user should be able to, uh, uh, let us say. Uh, <coughs> Uh, select a PCB, a printed circuit board, or select a resistor, or a capacitor, or a transistor, or, uh, or a particular kind of IC and uh, 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 voltage source and uh, control so, uh, 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 grounds and current sources and so on and so forth. Right? Now, the the main theme uh, or the common theme between uh, these two applications is that uh, both of these applications are made up of fundamental objects which form the building blocks of these applications. So multimedia applications are built from several of these uh, different objects, they could be menus or scroll bars or so on. Similarly CAD applications or uh, CAD projects uh, in a sense uh, or multimedia projects and CAD projects are in a sense uh, built using these uh, fundamental objects, uh, CAD project would have a PCB or IC and so on and so forth. Okay. So uh, the uh, what are the characteristics of these? Uh, complex data objects. It is quite apparent that uh, uh, these data objects uh, are not uh, easily amenable to reduction to a tuple. That is we cannot really reduce all of this to uh, one set of uh, uh, one tuple having a set of characteristics because uh, there is much more to uh, uh, an object than a set of different attributes. Uh, <coughs> So uh, what what is this? Uh, uh, what comprises this much more? Uh, essentially, the the idea of behavior of uh, an object. Uh, uh, a transistor, for example, behaves has a, uh, is is represented not only by uh, a set of attributes saying what kind of a transistor is that, or uh, uh, is it PNP or NPN or so on and so forth. What uh, whatever else uh, 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 goes into uh, describing the attributes of a transistor. In addition, uh, the transistor also has a particular kind of behavior. Uh, you can apply a voltage uh, at, at uh, one of the pins and uh, uh, measure the voltage at uh, one of the other pins and so on and so forth. Right? So uh, an object does not uh, simply represent a set of attributes but it also abstracts, uh, 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 rather an object is not uh, merely a, a structural abstraction but it is also a behavioral abstraction that is uh, when I say transistor the, the kind of behavior that, that the transistor uh, uh, emulates is also abstracted uh, by the object. And uh, uh, in an object uh, uh, there, there are several different instances of an object that can belong to the same class. So I could have several different instances of the same transistor uh, and, uh, uh, and each of these uh, different instances may have different sets of attributes uh, at any given point in time. That is. Uh, uh, the, the, the instance variables of, of each of these different transistors could be different. That means uh, each of the transistors uh, belonging to this particular class has different states uh, at any given point in time. So let us briefly uh, uh, take an overview of object orientation concepts. Uh, object orientation concepts here uh, I am uh, 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 essentially uh, looking at uh, from 
uh, object oriented programming point of view object oriented uh, uh, the, the idea of object orientation came from programming and uh, there are uh, uh, several kinds of OOPLs uh, or object oriented programming languages uh, which were uh, started uh, right from the early 70s and, and so on. So uh, let us look at uh, object orientation concepts from a programming point of view and then we, sh we shall look, uh, look into how each of these changes when we, uh, uh, when we consider object oriented database systems. Now uh, 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 the, uh, the, the fundamental building block in an object oriented uh, system is of course the object but, uh, uh, but then an object represents an instance and uh, an object belongs to a particular type and here this is called a class. So an object can belong to a particular class or rather we, we define uh, specific classes of objects and then uh, we instantiate different objects of specific classes. For example, we could define a class of objects called cars and we can instantiate an object uh, uh, of, of type car which, which uh, specifically uh, points to one specific car rather than the, the, the type of all possible cars. Then uh, the, the idea of uh, uh, an object is to provide uh, an abstraction to the user. So uh, 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 de depending on what, um, uh, what the application is, uh, when uh, a type of, uh, when, when an object of type car is created, uh, it represents an abstraction called car. That is each car is supposed to have, a, have certain properties, not just structural properties in terms of what attributes uh, the, the, uh, they have, but also behavioral properties. What can you do with the car and so on. So uh, uh, for example, take, uh, take something like menu uh, in, in multimedia databases. So menu is, uh, is an abstraction. That is it not only says what are the uh, attributes that make up a menu, but what is the behavior of the menu as well. That is uh, 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 the, the menu should provide a list of items and there is a default selection by the menu uh, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the user should be able to scroll up or scroll down the menu and so on and so forth. Okay. So uh, an object, uh, 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 an object uh, uh, provides an abstraction or an object uh, 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 <coughs> emulates an abstraction uh, of not just structure but also of behavior. And how is this abstraction provided through the notion of encapsulation that is an object uh, encapsulates structure and behavior within its uh, fold that is uh, uh, an object is defined by a set of attributes which define the structure th uh, th that is uh, 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 th that is um, uh, uh, described by the object and a set of methods or function calls that, that operate on these uh, uh, variables which define the behavior uh, th that is abstracted by this object. And of course, uh, th there is the notion of an interface that is uh, interface is also called the signature of an object that is uh, an object uh, 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 only exposes uh, or, or the only uh, thing that, that uh, theoretically at least that is, that is exposed to the outside world is the interface of an object. And uh, all uh, external world entities should interact with the object through the interface by calling particular methods and uh, uh, and changing attributes and so on. So uh, again just to give an example uh, or just to give an analogy, uh, a, a car for example uh, gives an interface in the form of a steering wheel and, uh, and a gear. Okay. So, so uh, you can interact with the car only through the steering wheel and the gear and of course the uh, pedals that is the, the brake pedal and the cl clutch pedal and so on. You cannot directly go uh, when you are driving a car you cannot directly go and manipulate uh, uh, how the engine behaves for example or how the wheels uh, behave and so on. Uh, you have to deal with the car through its interface. So interface is the uh, as far as the user is concerned the interface is the signature of the object. Uh, the, the, uh, if you want to learn to drive a car you should, uh, uh, you should know how to handle the steering, how to handle the uh, brake and clutch and gear and so on and so forth. So, so you should be able to know how to handle the interface rather than what uh, lies within the interface. And of course, uh, interface uh, uh, in, in software, uh, interface is made up of methods which are function calls which, uh, uh, which change the state of the object. And uh, methods themselves have, uh, have particular signatures that is uh, each method has uh, requires 0 or more uh, input parameters and has uh, 0 or, uh, or 1 output uh, uh, parameter as well. So, so that forms the signature of a method. 
and attributes of, of a class is, is the set of variables that, that define the state of the class. For example, in a, uh, again in a car, the, the attribute would be uh, something like uh, which gear the car is in or what is the speed of the car or what is the acceleration of the car and so on and so forth, which, which basically describe what is the current state of the uh, car. So, any method call would change the or uh, would uh, influence the attributes of this object. And object state of course is, uh, 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 is, is a function of what are the values of different uh, uh, each of these attributes. So, uh, the state of an object uh, is something like uh, let us say the state of a car is uh, can be defined as say cruising uh, when uh, uh, speed is so and so and the, and the gear is in overdrive and so on and so forth. So, so basically you define uh, a set of values and say now if, if these are the set of values then uh, this is uh, said to be the state of an object. And there are again uh, uh, some more par, uh, some more uh, concepts uh, pertaining to object orientation, uh, which uh, which are also uh, which may also be important. That is uh, some notions of say message passing. So when uh, uh, <coughs> when when an external world uh, entity uh, invokes uh, the the method of an object, uh, it is said to have uh, passed a message to the object, and the message in turn invoked the uh, object. That is uh, in, invoked the method of of this object, and. Uh, uh, some uh, uh, some more uh, concepts of object orientation which uh, which are particularly useful are the notion of inheritance polymorphism and overloading that is when we define a class uh, we can define a generalization specialization relationship uh, which we also saw in let us say the uh, enhanced uh, uh, er model where uh, a generalized class uh, represents a uh, general uh, more general entity than uh, its specialized classes that is wherever uh, 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 an object of the uh, of a generalized class is required it should be safe to substitute it with an object of a specialized class therefore uh, <coughs> uh, suppose uh, i have a generalized class called uh, 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 class called uh, class called uh, 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 say suvs or whatever sports utility vehicles and so on so and there could be different classes of suvs uh, whatever uh, uh, qualis and uh, uh, scorpio and so on and so forth so so, so, so several different uh, uh, kinds of suvs and uh, for uh, 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 and what constitutes a correct uh, generalization specialization relationship uh, the, uh, wherever i need uh, an object of the generalized class it should be safe to substitute it with an object of the specialized class so the specialized class is said to have inherited uh, properties from the generalized class and of course extended on the properties or uh, overridden on the properties uh, uh, and so on. So, uh, uh, a specific property or a specific method for example, uh, uh, again uh, coming back to uh, uh, CAD databases or uh, uh, which, which we said we are, we are going to have a, uh, a running example. So, suppose I have uh, a CAD uh, a database and I have a generalized class called uh, say a transistor and I have a specialized class called a specific kind of transistor uh, of, of, some, of some particular number. So, uh, 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 <coughs> whatever behavior is uh, uh, is specified by the generalized class uh, uh, can be actually overridden by the specialized class and uh, and in a sense the same method signature seems to be uh, giving different kinds of behaviors depending on which object of the specialized classes uh, uh, is substituted so so that brings in the notion of polymorphism that is the the, the same signature uh, method signature giving rise to different kinds of behaviors uh, that uh, that emanate from the system and uh, there is also the notion of overloading where uh, 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 which, which is a feature that is present in many uh, object oriented languages where the, the uh, uh, where uh, slight changes in, in method signatures uh, can be used to, uh, uh, to, to, to perform uh, different classes of the same activity. For example, we can say something like uh, 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 something like add ok. Now, uh, when I say add to uh, uh, I, I can say add int comma int where uh, it add uh, it takes in two integers and gives out an integer. Now, the same add could be defined as int comma float or float comma int or float comma float where where you can add different combinations of integers and floating point numbers and uh, uh, return back. So, uh, at run time the, uh, the, the message passing framework is going to determine which kind of add is being called depending on what uh, uh, what is the type of the parameters that is 
uh, uh, that is passed. And then there are uh, pure object oriented languages where uh, everything is an object, there are no uh, what are called as native types. So uh, every single entity like uh, uh, an integer, uh, every integer or every character uh, is an object and uh, uh, there, there are no uh, uh, native uh, or, or fundamental data types other than objects. And then there are hybrid object oriented programming languages where uh, which do allow uh, native types and of course uh, 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 what, what may be termed as semi object oriented programming languages where uh, you can uh, do, uh, you can perform both object orientation and procedural programming uh, in the same language. Now let us come to object orientation uh, as pertaining to databases. Now what extra features do we require in the concept of object orientation uh, when, when we talk about databases. The main uh, uh, concept that is required for databases is the notion of persistence, uh, persistence of an object or persistent object. What is a persistent object? A persistent object is something that, that can exist persistently or permanently that is uh, uh, the, the object can exist even after the, the program using the object has finished. That means the object exists on some uh, persistent storage like uh, disk and uh, can be recreated or can be uh, 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 reread back from disk whenever required. Now uh, uh, for, for storing persistent objects uh, in, in uh, object oriented databases uh, another uh, 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 important uh, requirement is the notion of an object identifier. That is uh, it is important to uh, <coughs> Now it is important to uniquely identify each persistent object that is stored in the database. And you might think of this as a, as a primary key uh, as in uh, uh, that, that, uh, uh, that we uh, uh, discussed in uh, relational database systems, but uh, there are some slight differences between an object identifier or an OID versus a primary key. Uh, an object identifier or an OID is automatically created by the system whenever a new object is added to the system, whether uh, the, the user specifies it or not. On the other hand, uh, it is the user uh, who specifies what forms the primary key in any database relation. And of course, uh, in, in, a, uh, uh, in pure uh, relational algebra, uh, each uh, tuple is uh, unique. That is, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, a table is a set of tuples and not a bag of tuples. Therefore, in the worst case, the entire tuple forms the primary key for, uh, for, the, uh, 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 for the table. However, object identifiers uh, are, uh, are uh, separate, uh, uh, separate attributes that is the entire object cannot form, uh, 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 cannot form uh, the, the uh, or cannot uniquely identify a given object. This is because two or more objects belonging to the same type can have the same state uh, uh, and, and hence be indistinguishable as far as their uh, other attributes are concerned, but they still would represent two different objects. For example, I can always have uh, two different transistors uh, uh, in, in any given uh, circuit board which, uh, uh, which have the same input voltage at the same time uh, for at, at, uh, e uh, or same input or output voltage at each of its pins at the same time. However, they are still different transistors. So, uh, uh, so by default uh, an object uh, database is a bag of objects that is uh, 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 all attributes of an object do, uh, need not necessarily uniquely identify an object. So uh, we, we uh, uh, necessarily require an OID or, or an object identifier. And the way objects are uh, stored in databases are uh, uh, as far as possible should be with direct correspondence, in direct correspondence to real world objects. So I can store an object like transistor or capacitor or PCB or whatever. So uh, where, where you have direct correspondence to what uh, one can see tangibly in the real world. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, and uh, of course there are, there are several different uh, 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 attributes that define an object uh, which, uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, alter the state of an object. Uh, and of course, uh, these variables for, for uh, uh, attributes are defined at a class level, whereas uh, 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 when an object is instantiated, these become instance variables and the instance variables of different objects could be different, even though they belong, to, uh, they, they, uh, 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 they uh, represent the same attributes. And uh, uh, <coughs> Just like in object oriented uh, programming languages, objects are defined by uh, uh, signatures which, uh, uh, which are the interfaces of, of, uh, of objects and even methods have signatures that, uh, uh, that, that are defined by uh, uh, 
uh, th that are defined uh, in uh, for the objects and uh, 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 every other uh, notion in an uh, in an opl are also reused here something like uh, the the inheritance and uh, 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 reuse of objects that is when when you inherit uh, the, base, uh, uh, the the derived class or the, or the specialized class reuses uh, certain properties of the base class. That is, uh, because it inherits certain properties of the base class, we can uh, think of it as some kind of a reuse. And uh, 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 there is also a notion of referential integrity in object oriented databases uh, by the use of OIDs. That is, uh, every OID, uh, uh, suppose an object A refers to another object B. Uh, this reference is uh, is captured by may, uh, by putting the OID of object B as an attribute of object A, and referential integrity is uh, uh, is uh, uh, enforced by ensuring that at every at any point in time the OID that is represented as an attribute uh, in in any given object is always a valid OID. And of course, there is uh, operator polymorphism and, and overloading and uh, uh, other concepts that, that are uh, uh, common in uh, OPLs. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> so let us have a look, uh, 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 let us come back to the object identity aspect. Uh, like uh, I said before, the, the OID is, uh, 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 is mandatory in any object oriented database system and uh, this is usually a system generated unique identifier that is uh, uh, the, the user need not even be uh, aware that there is an OID that is created for each object. However, the, the, the system uh, uh, by itself uh, creates uh, uh, unique object identifiers and of course, the OIDs uh, have no uh, relationship to the values of attributes that is the set of all values. Uh, uh, of attributes of an object uh, need not necessarily uh, uniquely identify a given object. And uh, 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 usually OID is a, is a logical number and uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is not uh, uh, advisable to base uh, OID on the physical address of an object. Suppose I have stored the object in a particular directory tree, uh, we should not keep the directory tree as the OID of an object. because. Uh, the uh, uh, because uh, of, of several uh, reasons like uh, uh, if the if the database is migrated to to, to a different uh, uh, system or if the directory tree is changed then then uh, then the, the OID changes and the object becomes inaccessible. Now, uh, like I had said before, um, uh, every instance of an object is characterized by a state of an object. Now, how do we define the state of an object uh, in terms of the uh, database uh, uh, or in the database parlance? Uh, this slide shows uh, a formal model of how the state of an object is uh, is represented, or in a sense, the structure of an object. Uh, the, the the structure defines uh, defines the state space in a sense. So, so the the different kinds of states that, that an object can be. So, uh, an object structure is, uh, is uh, de uh, defined by a triple uh, comprising of three uh, values i, c, and v where uh, I is the object identifier and uh, uh, C is what is called as a type constructor and V is the object state. So, uh, uh, I uh, is the, is the uh, well known OID that, that uh, we have been talking about and C can be, uh, 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 C is what is called as a type constructor that says what type of type in, in a sense uh, or what type of value uh, this is, go, uh, is this going to be. And usually uh, 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 object databases define different kinds of type constructors like uh, atom and tuple, uh, set, lists, bags, arrays and so on. Uh, an atom type for example defines a specific atomic value. So, I can say uh, atom and then give a value of 5 for, for the uh, value. So, uh, this object represents an atomic entity uh, with wh whose value is 5. Okay. On the other hand, I can represent a, a tuple also as an object. So, uh, instead of uh, 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 one single value, a tuple represents a list of values, uh, an ordered list of values and uh, 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 a list of atomic values uh, essentially. And a set is an unordered uh, 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 set, set, of, uh, uh, set, set of values or uh, unordered collection of uh, distinct uh, values uh, that, that that can uh, uh, that we can take up and list uh, is similar to a tuple uh, except that uh, uh, in a tuple the size is fixed the size of a tuple is fixed but uh, in a list uh, uh, different instances may have different sizes of um, uh, uh, for uh, for the for the sequence of uh, values that uh, uh, we can take and bag of course is a, is a multi set that is a, a set with uh, uh, <coughs> 
uh, a, a set with uh, uh, repetitions and, and so on okay. So uh, uh, this slide shows uh, uh, <coughs> shows some examples here uh, uh, where uh, we uh, defined all these things already that is uh, when uh, uh, type C is atom uh, object state V would be one particular value in a, from a domain of basic values and when it is a set it is a set of values and, and so on. <coughs> now uh, this slide shows some examples here uh, let us say I define an object uh, O1 uh, uh, as a triple where, where I1 is the OID of the object and the object if is of type atom and the value of that uh, uh, of this object is Chennai. That means uh, this object uh, essentially stores an atomic value or an atomic entity called Chennai uh, as, as part of this object okay. Similarly O2 uh, uh, has, has an OID of I2 and uh, it stores an atomic value called 35 and O3 is a, um, uh, is a tuple uh, wherein uh, each element of this tuple is an OID that is uh, uh, I1 is a, is a OID of, uh, of belonging to the class called place. So O1 uh, 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 that, that is I1 for see uh, look, uh, look here that I1 refers to this I1 here right. So this I1 is an object uh, uh, is I1 basically represents an object called O1 and O1 belongs to uh, uh, a class called place and similarly I2 uh, represents an object called O2 which belongs to a class called num. Right. So uh, uh, this O3 is a tuple of different uh, OIDs where uh, different uh, uh, it is in, in, in a sense it is a composition of, of different objects uh, of, of different uh, types uh, 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 in the form of a tuple. Similarly uh, O4 is a set comprising of three different OIDs uh, O1, uh, I1, I2 and I3. Yes. So as you can see here uh, uh, it is possible not only to represent specific uh, 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 atomic entities uh, it is also possible uh, or rather uh, uh, or even a collection of atomic entities it is also possible to start composing objects uh, one, uh, uh, one object uh, inside another for example O3 in a sense is a composition uh, uh, th that is made up of uh, O1 and O2. Right. So, and similarly, O O4 is a set or a, is a collection that contains all three elements. That is, uh, O3, uh, O1, O2, and O3. Right. So, uh, depending on these kinds of associations between objects, whether it is a composition association or uh, uh, or some kind of a, uh, 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 whatever other kind of associations that we can uh, th that we can uh, uh, define the an object database can actually be represented as a graph structure so so where each object uh, in turn has some kind of an association whether it's a containment or inheritance or uh, some other kind of an association with other objects in the database <coughs> And uh, when we are uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, the, the states of uh, 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 objects remember I had mentioned that two or more objects may have the same state but that does not necess necessarily mean that they are the same object uh, uh, because uh, uh, as long as their OIDs are different uh, they, uh, uh, th they essentially uh, <coughs> refer to different objects. So this slide shows such an example so I at any at any instance of time I may have two different objects O1 and O2 whose states are the same that is they represent one atomic value whose value is 35 and there is one more uh, uh, <coughs> object of the same type called num that, that we defined in the previous slide uh, which uh, represents a uh, value called 20. However, uh, uh, even though both of these uh, have the same state and this has a different state all three are different objects. Uh, namely because the OIDs are different uh, I1, I2 and I3 okay. Similarly here uh, uh, these objects I1, I2 and I3 uh, uh, or I, I2, I3 and uh, I2 or whatever so, so uh, uh, these two O4 and uh, O4 here okay uh, have the same uh, state that is A1, I1, A2, I2, A3, I3 and in this case uh, it does uh, 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 represent the same object why because I4 is the same as I4 here. So at the end of it, it is just this OID which determines whether two objects are the same, uh, even when this, uh, 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 regardless of uh, what is the state of these objects. And uh, different uh, object-oriented uh, database systems uh, 
uh, have uh, provide different mechanisms for defining uh, custom types or custom classes. So uh, uh, here uh, uh, th this is some kind of a pseudo code for, uh, for, for particular kinds of uh, 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 object database systems and uh, later on uh, 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 we will be looking at one particular uh, standard for, for representing types the, namely the uh, uh, OMDG standard. But uh, 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 the, the idea here is that the, the, the user can define uh, his own types for example uh, uh, the user defines an object uh, of type employee comprising of different uh, attributes that is uh, th there is a uh, uh, first name last name salary supervisor and so on and uh, so 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 uh, uh, th this forms a tuple of different attributes that uh, uh, <coughs> that represents a, uh, 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 an object of type uh, employee similarly there is a uh, 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 th th there is a, a nested uh, uh, declaration here that is uh, uh, department is a tuple comprising of department name and department number and manager which itself is a tuple uh, 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 comprising of an OID uh, uh, of, uh, of an object of type employee and a start date and so on. Okay. Uh, so that was uh, 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 you might have uh, got a question uh, now that uh, uh, what is the difference what really is the difference uh, between uh, uh, declaring objects or, or types uh, using uh, what we saw here and with the relational data model itself that is uh, both seems to be different ways of doing the same thing that is def uh, defining a set of attributes. However, object uh, databases differ uh, from uh, uh, in one important uh, uh, factor from relational databases namely that of object behavior. So, so the uh, uh, you, uh, you, can, you need not uh, I mean when you when you are defining a type of an object like, like say employee and department it is not just the attributes that you define but also the set of behaviors. So, so let us look at what uh, 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 what is the importance of behavior when it comes to uh, object oriented database systems. Now object behavior is uh, uh, is uh, abstracted by a set of methods and uh, which is visible as the object interface to the external world. Now the interface uh, as I said before is also called the signature of an object that is uh, each object should have a unique interface each class uh, 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 which uniquely identifies what are the kinds of behavioral abstractions that it provides. Okay. So uh, for example uh, uh, if I have a uh, object of, uh, uh, of type IC okay, of, of a particular IC type let us say uh, uh, some kind of a uh, uh, l let us say logic gate IC 7404 okay. So uh, uh, this object has particular kinds of behaviors that is you can you can provide uh, uh, input voltage to, to a particular pin and you can provide ground to a particular pin you can provide uh, inputs uh, logic inputs to uh, to particular sets of pins. Uh, uh, 7404 basically uh, has uh, 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 implements AND gates and uh, so, so you can basically provide logical inputs to, to certain pins and get logical outputs from certain pins and so on. So uh, 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 probe an input pin or uh, input a voltage to a particular pin all of these are methods that, uh, that are abstracted by the object. And uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, and of course uh, 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 when you are talking about attributes itself by default uh, or in pure object orientation uh, every attribute of an object is actually hidden from the external world that is the external world can uh, access an object only through its interface or only through its method declarations. But in reality though uh, some uh, attributes uh, are visible to the external world uh, while some attributes are uh, hidden from the external world that is the uh, which can be accessed only through method interfaces. Uh, in most object oriented databases uh, the, uh, the, the database management system allows the user to specify the interface of an object uh, along with the uh, 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 along with the attributes like, like the attributes here first name last name salary and so on uh, the, the, the user can also specify a set of interfaces. And the implementation of these methods that is uh, method declarations are provided here and the definition of these methods or the implementation of these methods can uh, actually be written uh, or uh, can be uh, uh, written elsewhere using a programming language or method definitions can be, uh, can be uh, done using any standard programming language like, like say C++ or Java or so on. So, so the, the uh, object database itself does not provide primitives or need not provide primitives. Uh, to, uh, uh, to, to define uh, methods but rather 
you can actually use cert, uh, uh, an existing object oriented programming language in order to uh, define a method interface. So, uh, defining a method interface now I mean uh, 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 embedding methods in addition to attributes will now enable us to define a uh, define a class uh, rather than a particular type. So, uh, one can define a class here for example, this, this slide shows the definition of a uh, of a class called department where, uh, uh, where, where the class has certain attributes like uh, 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 tuple uh, 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 which is a tuple of attributes which, uh, which basically contains uh, uh, department name, department number, manager which is another tuple and projects and so on. In addition, there are certain attributes, uh, certain operations that are also defined like uh, number of employees uh, uh, is uh, number of employees is, uh, is the name of the method which returns an integer. So, so when, when, the, uh, uh, when the external world calls this method, an integer is returned uh, which, which uh, essentially says what is the number of employees in this uh, department. Uh, similarly, create department which is, which is what is also called a constructor method that, that creates and instantiates uh, an object of uh, uh, type department and uh, 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 put some default values in, uh, uh, in several one or more of these uh, attributes uh, and uh, assign employee that is add an employee to the department and so on. So, uh, when uh, operations are defined in addition to, uh, uh, in addition to attributes, we get uh, the definition of a class in, uh, in contrast to a type. <coughs> and uh, object persistence, so, so how are objects themselves uh, persistently stored uh, uh, and, and referenced uh, uniquely? Of course, at the, uh, uh, at the uh, implementation level, the object uh, database uh, system uses the notion of OIDs. That is, when we refer to an object, uh, uh, and if it is a valid object in the in the database, it is uh, given a unique OID, object ID identifier. But what is the abstraction? That is, the, the OID is completely hidden from the user. That is, the 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 user or application program that is that is using this, uh, 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 let us say, the, the CAD tool. Uh, uh, does not uh, or need not have to know the OIDs of each objects that have been uh, instantiated and stored in the database. Uh, instead, uh, the, the application program refers to each object by different kinds of mechanisms. Uh, uh, one uh, well known kind of mechanism is, uh, is by the use of a naming mechanism. That is, uh, I can refer to a particular object like say uh, IC, uh, IC 7401 uh, or 7404 number 2 whatever. Okay. So, uh, each specific object of 7404 uh, uh, that, that have created uh, can be given a specific number or uh, this is the uh, uh, this, this is the first IC or second IC and so on. Uh, and uh, like that uh, uh, using that as, as a mechanism the application program can uniquely refer to each object and uh, each unique name. Uh, in turn translates uh, uh, internally to each unique OID. On the other hand, uh, th there is another kind of uh, 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 th there is another kind of uh, 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 mechanism by, uh, by which uh, objects are referenced uh, in, in an object uh, database system by the notion of reachability. That is, uh, uh, it may be difficult to give a unique name for every object that, are, that is stored in the database system. For example, if my, uh, uh, let us say I am storing the uh, circuit of, uh, uh, of, a, of a big uh, uh, computer like this. Okay. Now, uh, it, it has uh, uh, several hundreds of components and uh, 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 this particular circuit is part of uh, a larger database of circuits and uh, each different uh, um, uh, uh, each of these different uh, uh, units or each of the objects that, that are stored in this database has to be given a unique name uh, and uh, uh, which might be implausible. I mean, it, 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 may, it may not be a practical thing to do. So, the, uh, another way of uh, 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 representing or referencing objects is, to re is, uh, is through the notion of reachability. That is, uh, let us say that uh, one particular element in a circuit can be reached only through another particular element. Let us say transistor uh, uh, X can be reached only through the, the pin number 5 of, uh, uh, of this IC okay, or, or whatever. Okay. So, uh, we do not uh, in, in such cases we do not give a unique name to this transistor and instead we contend with just the name of the IC and uh, 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 any other object that, uh, that, ca that can be uniquely reachable through the IC can be uniquely identified uh, by naming the IC and then following the links. So, uh, it is uh, 
so reachability essentially defines a, a sequences of references in, in the object graph uh, that, that would lead from a well known or named object A to uh, an unnamed uh, or reachable object B. So this slide shows, uh, uh, sh shows an example where, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, where in some uh, object oriented uh, database systems uh, where some uh, objects can be declared to be persistent. That is when we are working with an object oriented database system let us say a, a CAD application, a CAD application is built around uh, an ODBMS and uh, 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 the, the, the way of working with an ODBMS is, uh, uh, is seamless that is uh, uh, the, the user would be writing the application program and uh, as, uh, as part of the application program itself the user would be interacting with the object uh, database system. So uh, for example there are several let us say there are several class definitions that, that make up this application program and let us say one of these uh, uh, objects. Uh, 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 the, the defined by this class uh, is uh, should be persistent that is should be persistently stored in the database. So uh, uh, you, you basically define uh, th this, this object say uh, all departments uh, which is a persistent named object of type department set which is defined in the class here. So as part of your application definition itself you define which objects should be persistent and which objects can be transient that is uh, 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 <coughs> <laughs> that is they, they lose their uh, identity or they lose their state uh, when the program finishes uh, execution. And of course uh, 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 th this, is use, uh, this is using a Pascal X syntax where uh, you can say D equal to create department where uh, uh, create a new department object in, in this variable called D uh, and then uh, uh, make D persistent by, by adding it to a persistent set called all departments so, so, uh, 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 and, and then uh, save it to the database system. So in addition to uh, 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 th these different uh, 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 features that, that are provided by uh, an ODBMS like, like say uh, type definition, class definition, uh, method definitions and uh, 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 naming conventions and reachability and uh, persistence and so on, uh, th there are other kinds of uh, 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 features that, that, that are available in, uh, in an ODBMS where uh, 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 of, of uh, uh, what are called as type hierarchies and, and uh, inheritances and so on. So uh, the, the concepts here are more or less analogous to the, the concepts in OOPLs itself that is uh, uh, whenever I use a type hierarchy I am uh, 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 I am uh, essentially referring to a uh, generalization and specialization relationship. So um, uh, and uh, a type hierarchy is defined by a, a, a subtype and a supertype that is uh, uh, I can define something like a student is a subtype of, uh, uh, of person uh, uh, and uh, uh, so where, where I, I could have defined person as, as a tuple comprising of name, address, age. Uh, social security number and so on uh, and uh, I can define student as a subtype of person where uh, uh, it contains all attributes that, that make up uh, a person in addition there are attributes called branch and GPA which, uh, uh, which are important for uh, defining a student as well okay uh, and similarly uh, <coughs> uh, I can uh, uh, one can define uh <coughs> inheritances that is uh, 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 an object of uh, type rectangle as a subtype of a geometric object which is uh, which is not just a, uh, a tuple here but uh, a, a tuple comprising of uh, a tuple uh, in addition to certain behaviors. So uh, and then you say uh, a rectangle is defined by width and height in addition to whatever uh, makes up geometric objects. Uh, then there is the notion of an extent in, uh, in object oriented database systems. Extent is in some way uh, to, to, give the, to, to give an uh, analogy to ER modeling. Uh, in entity relationship modeling we had the, uh, we had the idea of uh, entity types and entity sets. Uh, the, uh, ent uh, an, an, an entity type defined a type or, or a class of entities while an entity set is an entity type coupled with a collection of different instances of, of this entity type. So uh, th the concept that is used here for an entity set is an extent that is uh, extent is a collection of objects of the same type that is the uh, a type definition plus a collection of instances uh, forms an extent. 
So uh, 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 the, the object database system is organized in the form of extents, uh, different extents that is uh, di different uh, typed objects are stored uh, uh, in, their own, in their own extents. And then uh, uh, usually because uh, the, the uh, in, uh, in most object oriented uh, languages there is always a type hierarchy and uh, there, there is usually a uh, root uh, class or, uh, or like in Java there is what is called as the object class. Uh, th there is a default extent that uh, uh, that every object belongs to which is the uh, object extent or the, or the root extent. And uh, 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 depending on the class hierarchy or the type hierarchy there can be different sub extents that, that can be uh, defined on each of these um, uh, 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 de depending on the uh, class definitions of each of the objects that are stored in the database. <coughs> And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the the, uh, the way in which objects are stored can either be uh, structured uh, complex objects. I mean, now now we are uh, explicitly calling it complex objects. That is, uh, uh, objects which which are not necessarily amenable uh, or uh, data that is not necessarily amenable to the uh, to, to storage in a. Uh, um, uh, in, in a relational database form. So uh, one can think of uh, uh, a structured storage of, of a complex object or, or an unstructured storage. Structured storage essentially is, a, uh, is, uh, is, is some kind of a nested structure, uh, a tuple comprising of other tuples or uh, uh, sets and so on. So, so uh, uh, some kind of uh, 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 structuring that is made out of the, the um, the, the types that, that, that we defined or the, uh, uh, or the constructors, type constructors that we defined something like uh, 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 atoms and sets and uh, tuples and lists and so on. On the other hand there could be unstructured complex objects where uh, es es especially multimedia objects uh, where uh, I could have a video sequence or, or, or an audio sequence and so on where uh, uh, th there is no specific uh, structure as such but it is just uh, one uh, uh, heap of data, uh, uh, binary data that, that makes up this object and they are also called as blobs or uh, uh, what expands to binary large objects. So, the, so, so they are just binary data uh, the, the which are just stored and then uh, 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 and, uh, and stored in the database and defined as part of this object. Now. Uh, <coughs> Uh, there are several different uh, object database uh, standards that, um, uh, uh, that 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 existed uh, that, that exist, and uh, 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 there were several different uh, commercial implementations of uh, object-oriented uh, database systems. But uh, 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 many of them have, uh, in a sense, have gone out of business. But uh, quite a few of them have still survived. And uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, the main uh, uh, at least uh, as of today, the, the main uh, uh, application area in object uh, oriented database systems is in CAD applications where uh, uh, we need to store uh, objects of a particular uh, uh, having per, uh, not only particular properties uh, or particular structural properties but also behavioral properties. And these behavioral properties uh, uh, are uh, uh, the abstraction of these behavioral properties are extremely important. Uh, when uh, uh, when trying to build uh, let us say an electronic circuit or, or a mechanical design and so on as part of a CAD application. Now uh, until now we have been mainly talking about uh, uh, object database systems from a pseudo code perspective that is uh, 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 these are the features that, that several of these object oriented uh, database systems uh, 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 have or, or had uh, in a sense. Uh, but. Uh, 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 but but more concretely, there are there have been uh, uh, a few standards that that define what an object-oriented uh, database system should look like, and among them, the, the uh, uh, a well-known standard is the o ODMG standard, that is the the Object Data Management Group standard, and uh, uh, the uh, the uh, idea of this standard is uh, is to uh, 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 is to enable uh, s certain kinds of uh, uh, features or certain kinds of properties that, that make up an object oriented uh, database system so that uh, these uh, uh, they can be uh, uh, seamlessly ported across different uh, object database management systems or uh, ODBMSs. And uh, uh, the, the, the main idea behind the standard is the uh, interoperability between uh, 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 between uh, different ODBMS and uh, ODMG 2.0 defines several different uh, uh, concepts. Uh, it, it defines a basic object model and an object definition and a query language and it also defines uh, uh, different kinds of bindings to 
programming languages. So, let us briefly look at uh, uh, what are the main or salient features of the, of the ODMG 2.0 standard uh, 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 and uh, uh, in, in, in the interest of time and brevity we shall not be looking into uh, uh, great uh, we shall not be looking in great details in, in, in the into the standard but, uh, but rather look at what are the main features that are provided by this standard. And uh, ODMG standard provides this uh, uh, basically it is the, the idea here is, is, is the standardization of terminology. And uh, uh, as shown in this slide objects in an ODMG standard are defined by the, these different entities that is uh, name, uh, uh, identifier, lifetime and so on. And it also defines several types of uh, uh, attributes atomic uh, attributes, collections, structures and so on. And uh, uh, interface definition uh, is uh, more or less the, the, the same that, that we saw in the, uh, uh, as in the pseudocode. And uh, 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 there, there are several uh, uh, default objects or default classes that are defined by uh, ODMG uh, standard. And uh, uh, of this uh, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, default object is the uh, or default class is the collection class which defines a collection of different objects. And uh, this collection class has several uh, methods that are, that are defined like uh, you can query the cardinality of a collection, uh, you can query whether the collection is empty or you can uh, insert an element into a collection or remove an element from a collection and, and, uh, and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, the, the, there are specialized the built in uh, uh, collection objects can further be specialized into different uh, uh, kinds of these uh, 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 you, you can specialize a collection as a set or, a, or, or as a list or a bag and, uh, and so on. So, all of these uh, inherit the collection interface. So, uh, let us not go into uh, each of these in detail uh, let us uh, 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 on the other hand look at uh, some of the type hierarchies uh, 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 look at the main type hierarchy that is defined by the ODMG standard itself. Uh, 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 like in Java there, there is a root object in the in the ODMG standard which is object that is every object belongs to this class called object uh, root class which is this uh, uh, which is called object and then collection uh, uh, is a special class of objects which represents a collection of objects. And then there are several other kinds of objects like date, timestamp, interval, set, bag, dictionary and so on and so forth. So, so this, this, is a, uh, 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 this is a partial type hierarchy that is defined by the uh, ODMG 2.0 standard. So, so, let us summarize what we have learnt uh, in this uh, session today. Uh, we talked about complex data objects and how they, uh, they need not be amenable to a relational uh, 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 reduction to a relational storage. So, so, we looked at object orientation concepts and uh, wherein the notion of a state of an object and the OID of an object become uh, important in order, in order to be able to store objects. Then uh, storage of objects are called persistent objects and how they can be uh, accessed through naming and reachability and so on. And then we also looked at the ODMG standard, ODMG 2.0 standard which defines its own uh, class hierarchy of, of different classes. So, that brings us to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you.